Ryan Foland, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Ahoy, it's good to be here, John. Yeah, it's great to be with you. I'm excited for a nice conversation today. We're going to be focusing on how to be your authentic self to better connect and relate to people at work and in life. And we know with leadership, it's all built upon a foundation of trust and trust is built upon a foundation of authenticity. And so if we can't learn to be authentic with ourselves, with our spouse or partner, with our family, with friends, community members, and with those we work with, uh, I don't think we have really much chance of developing truly mutually accountable uh, relationships of trust uh, with with those around us and certainly within an organization and as a leader, that's what I'm striving for. That's what I need if I hope to be successful as a leader and I hope to drive success in my team and in my organization. So this is what we'll be exploring together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Ryan's bio with everybody. Ryan Foland is a high energy speaker, three-time podcast host, and brand consultant who teaches executives how to build their personal brands. His 313 method uncovers core brand messaging to guide Bespoke, bespoke content, <laughs> bespoke, yeah, to guide bespoke content marketing strategies. Ryan has given four TEDx talks and has been featured in Inc., Entrepreneur, Forbes, Fortune, and more. His award-winning book, Ditch the Act, teaches you how to get ahead in business by simply being human. For fun, Ryan sales draws stick figures and wraps. Uh, that's wonderful. Maybe I should ask you for a little wrapping demo uh, before we get started, or maybe that's for another time. Uh, but uh, that that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context? No, I mean, my, my life as of writing this book is an open book, <laughs> which is one of the things that I believe is key to authenticity is essentially you know, coming clean with everything that's happened. And I find that my personal journey, there's a number of moments where I was very fearful if people would find out about it. And those things that uh, we don't want people to know about, surprisingly, are the things that will connect us the most with people. And that's just counterintuitive. So I think that, um, you know, to know me is to know that uh, I'm, I'm a little bit quirky, I'm a ginger, I don't take myself or things too seriously, and the more I've become comfortable with that quirkiness, the more people can find me authentic. I, I like the word authentic, but it's hard to describe being authentic by just using the word authentic, because it's just like, it's very surface level. And as we dive into this concept, the thing I'll keep going back to is what authenticity, to me at least, is actually letting somebody get to know me. And there's this old adage that people like to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And trust is how you really form longer term relationships that span time. And if you reverse engineer that, <clears throat> it all starts with getting people to get to know you. And if you don't give up any information about who you are, how are people going to get to know you? <clears throat> so there's the conundrum that we face as we try to build brands, as we try to build businesses, as we try to become better leaders. We have inherently this thought that we're supposed to show up in a certain way. People are supposed to look up to us. We're supposed to show the shiny spots. You know, I'm not necessarily going to brag about my third place medals or even worse, not, not making it to the podium. But when we think of it that way, we literally miss most of the opportunities to connect with people. And so I learned firsthand that faking it till you make it, though it works for some people, it didn't work for me because it didn't allow me to, to let people know who I really was. I was trying to let people know who I thought that they thought that I should be. And, and there's sort of where the stitching can come undone and uh, it's not like things are lost. You actually just now have common threads so that you can build new relationships with people based on common experiences. And uh, one funny question I'll ask is, now, have you ever played the lottery yourself? Have you ever gotten numbers or done a scratch card? Yeah. Okay. Have you oh, ever actually asking me? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, I haven't actually. Okay. So a lot of people have, you know, been in the lotto, but hardly any people win. Like I don't, I've never met anybody who's won the lotto, right? And so I look at that as an analogy where so many times we take chances and then they don't work. We, we do the scratch card and then it doesn't work, but we're not out yeah. there being like, hey, 
I didn't win the lottery today, right? We all wait for that lottery moment to share, but there's so much more in the times that, <laughs> that we didn't that we didn't win the lottery. And I think we all can relate to not winning. We can all relate to when things are tough. This pandemic has given us a way to, to relate on a global scale where we're all dealing with some of the same challenges. So that's that's the really the root of authenticity. And I'm happy to see where the conversation goes. At the end of the day, it's your ability to be comfortable letting people get to know you. And if you think of the other side, those people who you might find most authentic you actually know them or you feel like you know them because they give you enough of a full picture about them. Yeah, it's, it's all about connection, right? And we can't truly connect with someone and develop trust with them if we're not being true to ourselves, if we're not being authentic. And so the fake it till you make it thing, that bugs me too. I, I get on a certain level, it makes sense. And we're all building the plane while we're flying it. And so in a sense, we're all faking it till we make it. Um, or another way to frame it in a way that I like to frame it much better is that we're just all constantly learning, growing, experimenting, and we don't need to put on the facade of like knowing what we're doing. If, if we're comfortable with the fact that we're all flawed, messy individuals who are all trying to figure it out as we go, and we're all trying to continually learn, then I, I can kind of let go of the whole fake it till you make it thing. And I can just say, no, I, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm doing the best I know how, and I'm learning as I go. And that's all I can expect of myself and of others around me. And it's, it's, quite liberating when you can lean into that kind of a framing of life. Uh, it, it takes off so much pressure <laughs> because you just don't have to be perfect. And none of us are even remotely close to being perfect. Uh, we all have our flaws, of course, and we all have our baggage and, you know, we have to appropriately share with people. We can't dump on people, but you know, if, if, if I can be a little bit vulnerable with you, you're going to, generally that's going to increase the chances that you're going to open up and be a little bit more vulnerable with me. And therefore we're being more genuine and authentic and connecting. Right. And as we have those human connections, that's more and more opportunity for us to build meaningful relationships of trust where that can lead to all sorts of great things, you know, in the workplace, of course, that can lead to collaborations that can lead to new interesting innovations uh, things that would never happen if we never connected with new people in new interesting ways. Yeah, so I'd say two things to pull from what you just mentioned, uh, I think are worth reiterating. <clears throat> One is this idea that, um, you know, you talked about how when you're vulnerable or when you open up, it gives people a chance to kind of connect. If we look at the word connect and replace it with help, it actually is interesting. Because in our minds, we're a lot more judgy of ourselves than other people might actually be. And when you are, quote unquote, vulnerable, as Brene Brown repositions it into courageous enough to sort of open up, what it does is it actually opens up this window so that the person you're talking with can support you, whether it's their advice, whether it's a common experience that they've had, whether it's a book that they read, <clears throat> whether it's a documentary that they saw. And so if you look at connection... If I'm talking with you and I'm like, yeah, things are great. It's amazing. I'm making all kinds of money. I'm happy with the wife. Things are good. The sailboat's working, all this kind of stuff. Like, what do you have to participate in that conversation? You just sit there and you're like, okay, well, that's cool. I feel bad about myself. No, well, I don't have that. Okay, that's <laughs> you know, good. good for you. Pat you on the back, right? But <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's a pretty shallow kind of a connection, right? There's no way for you as the, as the participant in the conversation to participate. And so if you take the same, I guess, number of words, but I'll be like, <clears throat> well, you know, uh, I hit a rough patch with one of my clients. I might lose them. And the sailboat just got out from the yard. And now I realize that there's more work to be done. And even today I was trying to get on my Zoom and I had to restart my whole computer just to use the functionality that I wanted. And now all of a sudden there's like, you can share a project that you didn't think they were about. You can talk about a client and how you brought them back. You can talk about how like, oh my gosh, I'm the same thing happened to me with Zoom. And now there's a back and forth. So that connection is really conversation. And if it's just, here's how awesome I'm doing. It's like, it's like an Instagram post where you're like, wow, that's so amazing. All I can do is really just like it. Versus if somebody is talking about something that's, not necessarily bad. I'm not like emotionally throwing up on you, but like spilled coffee on myself today or having a challenge, like show to play to a meeting. What do you do to repair that damage? 
And now it's like, I like it and I have a comment. So if what you're saying doesn't let people give this quote unquote comment, then, then there is no connection. So I think that's an interesting way to look at it. And I don't wanna say that, maybe I will. If you only share the good stuff, it's selfish because you're not allowing the, partic the person to participate. And so this leads to the second topic uh, of what you had mentioned, which is this idea of somebody's gotta go first. And people, well, what does ditching the act mean? Well, when you get online with somebody and you haven't met them before, or it's a colleague or a boss, and you're like, hey, how's it going? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, good, okay. Should we get going? Yeah, let's, let's get going, okay. Like if nobody goes first, there's no opportunity to go second. So instead, if when I was talking with my boss, so when I walked in this morning, it's like, how to go? And I was like, well, we didn't go because I was supposed to go lobster diving last night, but there was like five foot waves and low tide and I haven't figured out how to control mother earth yet. And I was just bummed about it. And we had this whole conversation about being bummed about stuff that we plan on based on weather or something that we have no control over. And so I felt so much better about it. I was, it's just, it's just somebody has to go first. So the challenge is, and the next time the conversation happens where somebody's like, oh, how are you doing? Instead of just defaulting to great, awesome. Try to share something. I don't know, I didn't get that great of sleep last night. You just went first. Somebody else would be like, you too? Oh my gosh, right? So <laughs> this idea of being brave enough to just go first you just see what happens. People participate. They get to know you through that kind of stuff. So I think you brought out two good points about connectivity and this opportunity, but somebody's got to start it, right? Yeah. And getting past the social niceties of it, right? And, and sometimes people ask how you're doing. They really don't want to know. They just want... <laughs> They just want to say hi and wave, and so it's not awkward, right? And right, and I or guess they want to it, get to their update. They they want to like blast through that so they can talk about what they're doing. Right, right. And so I think we're 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 setting those things aside because those types of interactions happen all the time, and I can't force someone to actually care about my you know how I'm doing. So when people ask how are you doing, you know they either care or they don't care, and if they don't care you know, just say, I'm doing fine. Great. How are you? You know, and you say you the social niceties, you move on, but if you're actually looking for meaning connection and something that goes a little bit deeper and, and, and admittedly, you know, that's a smaller subset of those interactions, but if we're actually looking for that, and especially with coworkers, people that were around all the time, we should strive for something deeper than that. Then we have to, we have to be a little bit vulnerable. We have to be willing to go first and we have to be willing to, you know, put ourselves out there a little bit. Now we can do that appropriately and we can do that little by little. We don't have to dump on somebody um, and nobody likes to be around someone who's always negative. And so if we're only always talking about horrible things or just being, you know, a, a Debbie Downer or something, <clears throat> you know, that's not going to be positive, but, but we can mix in the good, the bad, the challenging, just the reality, right? The reality of life, the messiness of life, because we all experience it. We all experience it. And, you know, I, I think about, you know, I, I've had a fairly successful career. I, I have lots of things that I can point to and say, I'm proud of that, or that's been a good thing. But you know what, for every good thing that's happened, you know, I have for every success, I have like five, 10 failures that I can easily point to as well. And while that's not what I'm going to be blasting across LinkedIn or whatever, you know, I need to be open to just the reality of that. And I, I need to be able to, if I want to actually have deeper relationships and connect with people, I have to be willing to go there. And if I'm not, it's always going to be surface level. And that's the frustrating thing for a lot of people, I think, is, is a lot of people kind of walk through life with a lot of acquaintances, a lot of people that they know and they can do the social niceties with, um, but not anyone they could ever really confide in or lean on or feel supported by because they haven't opened themselves up with that kind of vulnerability. And if we can find it in ourselves to try, and it can, we can go little by little, we don't have to like jump off the cliff right away uh, or dive off the cliff. But if we can do little by little, we can start to develop that foundation of trust with people. They'll start to open up. And, and be, before long, you have someone who actually is a friend, someone who actually is you know, a support mechanism for you and you for them. Uh, and that, again, that can happen at home, that can happen in your neighborhood with your friends, that can happen at, at work. Um, and I'm a bit a big advocate for us being closer 
with deep relationships at work um, so that we can be there for each other as we bring our whole authentic selves to the workplace. And you, you hit it there in the head about this small step process. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is that we, we put together a five step process because it is a step by step. And if you just go out there and like emotionally vomit on people, you are going to push people away. And there is a certain, there is reality when it comes to sharing too much. Um, and I think we all probably have stories where we've sort of felt distance from people. We, we need distance if, if it's too intense. So I believe that I can't tell you to do this. You can't tell somebody to do this. We can't tell somebody to do this. They have to, they have to try it. They have to see the value in it. And then they have to experience it. And that can start in baby steps. So level one, just as a real high level, uh, level one is silly, stupid stuff that goes wrong, like first world problems. Zoom not working, technical issues, forgetting your shoes when you're working, like all these little things, it's low hanging fruit. And it's like, the, like what's gonna go wrong if you share with somebody that for the third time today, you've had to warm up your coffee and you actually forgot it in your microwave. Like that's a real thing, but it's not gonna discredit your authority. So low level things are good to start with. And once you try that, I've, I've actually talked about heating up coffee and I've that's led into these conversations around coffee and heating and coffee versus tea, like all these things you're like, wow. So starting there will show you that connection that can happen. Level two, so once you get comfortable and see that people aren't like gonna judge you on spilling coffee on yourself, but they're actually like, they're like, okay, that, that makes sense because I've done that too. Level two, the next level is about relationships because we all have had challenges with relationships. So if you're sharing with somebody about a challenge that you're having with somebody else, that's like another layer of connectivity. The third level is, you know, big, bigger setbacks, things that you're afraid to tell people. Maybe the fact that, I mean, my story, I, I got a DUI and I hid it for 15 years, like hid it, like from my parents, they actually found out about it when the book was published. And they're like, wow, why didn't you tell us before? We could have supported you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like in my own mind, it was the biggest deal. And the lessons that I've learned from that has really changed me as a person. And so if you don't know that that was part of my story, you don't really get to know me, who I am now. So level three is the stuff that maybe are not sure people will land with. Level four is like the catastrophic stuff, the loss of businesses, the loss of marriages, the loss of, of children, these, these things that like are so heavy and you just don't go out and say it, but if you've built up a relationship with people and they continue to get to know you more, then they're there for you. They're, they're going to hug you. They're going to they're gonna let you cry. They're going to be there and you build up to that. And then level five is what not to share. So anything that's divisive, extreme politics, extreme religion, extreme sex, extreme drugs, extreme anything, you just have to know is like, whoa. So if you look at this as a step-by-step -step process, I think we're both saying the same thing. It's like start small and then let the world show you that this person is now actually interested in helping you out. Wow, they didn't just totally judge me and hang up the phone call. No, they just shared their own experience. And, and as you said, it's those moments over time, people get to know you. It's up to them if they want to like you or not. It's, it's, so there are people that don't like certain personalities, don't like certain you know, ways that people show up. But if they do like you, based on getting to know you, that's the foundation for trust. And that's that's what this idea of ditching the act is all about, because yeah. we have these different personas. Like, you know, maybe you're slightly different around your wife or your husband or your partner than you are your boss. Or like when your mom shows up, do you straighten up? Because, you know, she's going to give you a hard time <laughs> for it. Like, and the dissonance between what you're showing up as and what you really are, that becomes stressful over time. And it's so unfortunate when you see these people who are just like, they seem like everything's fine. But what's really going on is a total delta and then they take their own life or they get into trouble or they it comes out in a negative way so it's almost like a little pressure valve the more you're you're that constant person people get used to it and then you don't have to like change how you're showing up you don't have to do that like i'll be right back. hey oh oh hold on a second it's just so much less anxiety less stress less pressure yeah. and that's that's for me what what feeling like myself is like 
not thinking too much about what I'm going to say before I say it or changing how I am based on the audience. I'm like, I'm kind of me, whether you <laughs> one way or the other. And that stress lowers and the anxiety lowers. And then you just, I think quality of life improves people, people they're like, wow, I, thanks for being straight up with me or like giving me an opportunity to be more myself around you. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Ryan, this has been a fascinating conversation. We've only scratched the surface. I have so many other questions, but for today, we're going to have to end it there. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. So the best way to find me online is ryan.online. You can look at bringing me to your organization as a speaker. You can look at uh, purchasing the book to help as a sort of do it yourself. And uh, I do consulting for executives with their brands and love working with companies who want to make their business more personal. And I'm also, I'm a stick figure artist. If you look anywhere online, you'll see stick figures. And so uh, I'm having fun making some stick figure NFTs. So if you're in that space and you need an excuse to buy your first NFT, then I can be there for you. And I see it as a way of educating people of just transacting in a different way. And so I'm, I'm excited about technology and how that helps us all connect more. So there is it, ryan.online. Uh, I'm usually on Twitter if I'm on a social media platform. To my Instagram, you'll get a bunch of stick figures and sailboats. <laughs> and if you, if you had to sum up what we were talking about today in 30 seconds, how would you wrap things up? I would wrap it up by saying, here is the deal. Let me give it to you real. The key to connection is to learn to reveal because you are not perfect and neither am I. And that is the exact reason that we see eye to eye because everybody's different, but we are all the same. To be perfectly imperfect is how you win the game. And if you only showcase good and do not share the bad, you will miss connections that you never knew you had. So when you learn to ditch the act and learn to be yourself, you open up this window to have people help you out. <laughs> I love it, Ryan. That is fantastic. I even got some rap in there from you. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Ryan can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. <laughs>